Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, a Pittsburgh Steelers podcast made by fans like you, for fans like you. Now, here's your host, Joe Kuzma. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Steel City Underground podcast. My name is Joe Kuzma, and if you've been tuning in recently, you'll know that I have been talking about the NFL Draft. Yes, I'm gearing up just like the Pittsburgh Steelers for the end of the month to see who is going to join the Pittsburgh Steelers franchise among all the other franchises when the Pittsburgh Steelers select their first round choice with pick number 25 overall in the 2016 NFL Draft. Now, as I said, if you've been following along here, you'll know that I've been basically just, uh, it's not to say that I'll be beating a dead horse, but I've been looking at the draft from every single angle, just like anyone else. Uh, I've looked back at when draft picks aren't really necessarily a bust, just the short career span of uh, NFL players, how they don't last very long. And if you get any contribution whatsoever, which Kevin Colbert does, and I went back and even looked at all of Kevin Colbert's draft picks. I've talked about them here. There's articles over at SteelCityUnderground.com. I've talked about arguments against the Pittsburgh Steelers drafting a quarterback. That's right. I, I don't think it's time to draft a quarterback. But today's topic's a little bit different. Everybody wants to talk about secondary, and in the last show that I did, I talked about how maybe the Cincinnati Bengals picking at pick 24, just one before the Steelers do, and how they just lost their longtime safety, Reggie Nelson, over to the Oakland Raiders, could negatively impact the quality of talent that's available for the Pittsburgh Steelers, especially if they have one guy high on their board and they don't have the rest high on their board. So let's take a look at you know the Steelers this year. What are they going to do? Are they going to do anything differently than they have before? And in the past, everyone continues to talk about, just like when they are doing mock drafts now, they're talking about the Pittsburgh Steelers taking a corner. And, you know, in in the last few years, I've kind of been against the Steelers taking a corner in the first round. And I'm thinking they're always going to take the best player available. And I do believe they're in the same exact situation this year. So I can't say for sure that they're not going to take a corner, but in in the past, I, I was really against it. And I think they could take a corner, but it's still, it all depends on what the Cincinnati Bengals and other teams do right before them. If the Pittsburgh Steelers were to, say, have the fifth best corner available, but maybe the second best safety or the second best nose tackle or defensive tackle or maybe even a defensive end, uh, if, if you had a chance to go over to SteelCityUnderground.com and download our 2016 draft preview, you'll see that the Pittsburgh Steelers have been heavily focused on visiting uh, these college recruits, uh, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. And they're really focused on corners, safeties, and they're also fo- focused on uh, defensive tackles who can also play on the outside and maybe spell a Cam Hayward or a Stephon to it. So it begs the question to ask, Will the Pittsburgh Steelers continue their streak of drafting linebackers? Now, it seems like forever ago when the Pittsburgh Steelers did not take a linebacker with their first round draft pick. Okay, well, it wasn't maybe too long ago, but it was 2012. So you've had the 2013, 2014, 2015 drafts as three drafts. And we're going into the fourth, the fourth year where could the Steelers potentially pick up a linebacker? And as... As facetious as that that hypothetical statement seems, it's not it's not outside the realm of pro, uh, plausibility. So let's take a look over the last three years. The Steelers used their top selection on Jarvis Jones first, and then Ryan Shazier. Ryan Shazier was the year that everyone thought we were going to take Darquez Denard out of Michigan State, who ended up with the Cincinnati Bengals. And then last year was Bud Dupree, who fell like right into the Steelers' lap. And, it, and I kind of knew as soon as that happened, boom. Because it was like they saved like a, a draft visit almost right up until that like last minute. I remember maybe a week or so. or it, Dupree was one of the last visits because I just remember he was so highly rated that I, I don't think that Colbert and uh, Coach Tomlin even thought that Bud Dupree could fault them uh, at, at pick 22 last year. So now this year they're picking at pick 25, and I wonder if a lot of the league goes, let's say the league goes for corners, 
You're going to see some maybe a quarterback or two go off the board. And we really don't know what the Cincinnati Bengals are going to do ahead of us. Like I had hypothesized in the last episode, if the Bengals take a safety, that might sway the Steelers into another position and maybe grabbing a safety later on on uh, uh, waiting to, until day two uh, for the second or third uh, round, okay? So what happens if everyone goes with the corners? Because it's been a really popular choice lately where you see like five or six corners going in the first round. And it got me thinking maybe, maybe the Steelers could go linebacker again, but do they need a linebacker? I guess that's where... I guess that's where the argument is. Uh, We don't know if Jarvis Jones is the answer yet. I'm not against Jarvis Jones like maybe some others are. And I think Jarvis Jones offers uh, still potential upside. His first two years were injury riddled. And I I think he was really coming on. He, he's made some, uh, you know, he's had those flashes. And that's what people say. We want to see more than flashes. So I wouldn't write him off yet. But Ryan Shazier, if it wasn't for Ryan Shazier, I, the Pittsburgh Steelers don't beat the Cincinnati Bengals in the playoffs last year. I mean, it's that plain and simple. And Bud Dupree, of course, he started mixing in a rotation, and he had several sacks, and he was hot there for a while. He had a hot streak. But aside from those three guys, who are the guys that are left on this team? And we look at the veterans, the veteran leadership. Uh, Lawrence Timmons, uh, just a year or two removed from being in the Pro Bowl, and one of the all-time Steeler greats, James Harrison. And I, actually, James Harrison is just such a, such an enigma and such a topic all himself. I plan to speak about him and uh, give him a dedicated podcast episode here in the near future. But right now, just within the focus of would the Steelers look to find someone to replace Lawrence Timmons or James Harrison? And you got to think that, you know, I can't, you kind of take for granted that James Harrison's even here. I mean, he was supposed to retire two years ago. He's out. He's having these ridiculous workouts out in, I think, Arizona. And he's he's working up to play, maybe uh, play out his contract, which he has one year left on. And then that might be it. Maybe no more James Harrison. And granted, he's a role player right now. He's a rotational player. He's, he's still a contributor, and it's still somebody that you might have to look into the future uh, as far as replacing. And that's kind of where this topic came from. Uh, I'm always talking about the draft, and I was fielded a question on some of the younger guys that are coming up. And I'm thinking, you know, James Harrison's going to turn 38 in May. I mean, how, how much longer does he have left? I, I do think this is it. And Lawrence Timmons, again, was uh, a hot topic of discussion uh, just heading into, like, free agency uh, they were wondering if, would the Steelers front office uh, would would they make would they ask Lawrence Timmons to take a restructure? Uh, I think he got paid. It was either sixteen or it was six, it's sixteen million. I was thinking eighteen million, but he has a sixteen million cap hit this season. That's an awful lot of money, and the Steelers are, as we know, always cap strap uh, cash strapped up against the the cap uh, the total cap ceiling, and. You know, Lawrence Timmons is another guy that's going to be heading into free agency soon himself. In fact, uh, if we don't restructure or extend uh, Lawrence Timmons this year, he will hit free agency in 2017. And another one of our inside linebackers also is in that position to hit free agency as well. Former six-round pick Vince Williams, who looks to be the number one uh, backup option now that Sean Spence has left for the Tennessee Titans. But we did grab a uh, former Titan ourselves and Steven Johnson, but he's only signed to a one-year deal. So when you look at it from the onset, you're already looking at four players in Lawrence Timmons, Vince Williams, Steven Johnson, and James Harrison that could all be gone in 2017 as free agents. Now, you know, that it's, this isn't the sky is falling because we're still in April yet. And a lot of these deals get done around training camp when we're talking June and July and maybe even going to, in, into August. The Steelers will get the business done. And if they don't by then, we'll have a good picture of who's going to hit the market should this time of year come around and they haven't already done a deal. Because as we know, the Roonies don't do deals while the season's going on. So once they kick off for the regular season, that's 17 weeks plus hopefully some playoffs where we're not talking contracts. So four players there. And as far as on the inside, if uh, Vince, three of those guys are inside linebackers. So Steven Johnson, newly signed from Tennessee, uh, Vince Williams, and then, of course, veteran Lawrence Timmons. So it only leaves Ryan Shazier as the only proven commodity as an inside linebacker with the Steelers. And then on the outside, uh, you're pretty much looking at um, 
Jarvis Jones, if he should get offered, uh, he could also be a free agent. I'm going to go jar- back to Jarvis for a second. Uh, just like I had predicted would happen in my deals that the Steelers had to make, one of my podcasts and articles that are over on SteelCityUnderground.com, uh, about two months ago, I said, not only did I, I say that James Harrison needed to come back, but I also said that the Steelers needed to extend uh, the fifth-year contract option to David DeCastro. And if if you're not familiar with what that is, is when teams get the draft players in the first round, uh, they have them usually, they have them for like a four-year contract as opposed to some of the later rounds. And then they have something they could exercise called a fifth-year option, which does pay the player more money, as David DeCastro will see, uh, but it also gives the team an option. It's almost kind of like the franchise tag of dealing with expiring rookie contracts, but it only applies to first rounders. So Jarvis Jones would be eligible, uh, but the Steelers haven't really made up their mind yet. So Jarvis Jones could be another interesting uh, subject, but they could lock him up as well. It really leaves the Steelers thin outside of one guy I hadn't mentioned was Arthur Motes. And Arthur Motes was a guy that we had signed and then it extended last year uh, coming over from the Buffalo Bills. And there, he's the only backup option that could replace Jarvis Jones should Jarvis become a free agent next season as well. But like I said, they could exercise a fifth-year option if Jones has a good season, and, and he could be locked up at least for the 2017 year. So you're not gonna, looking at the, at the very extreme, but Arthur Motes is only here through 2017 as well. So not only do you have a bunch of linebackers that have one year left on their deal, four guys with one year left on your deal, now you have one guy that could be a one year and in, in maybe gone in Jarvis Jones, uh, or he could be gone in two years just like Arthur Motes could. And like I'm saying, we're kicking the can down the road. This is a lot of, uh, you know, looking into the crystal ball and saying, you know, my my famous phrase of coulda, woulda, shoulda. But you, you have to think, what else is behind uh, those players that have just been mentioned. And that's pretty much a lot of the linebacker core. You're looking at about maybe eight to 10 guys because we also lost Terrence Garvin. Uh, I believe he also went over to the Tennessee Titans as well, and he was a special team standout. So you're going to need some guys that could play on special teams. Uh, so the names that came up in this conversation were two sixth round choices, one that was made in 2014 and one was made in 2015. The 2014 selection in the sixth round was Jordan Zumwalt, who has like seen no action because he's been injured, uh, constantly on the injured reserve. And I have a feeling, you know, his window of opportunity is closing very rapidly, particularly if the Steelers decide to burn Maybe they might burn another sixth round pick coming up because they have an extra one and they have an extra seventh round pick, but they did lose a fifth round choice. So they don't have a whole lot of draft picks necessarily to play play with uh, as they have in the past because they only got the one compensatory pick. And then, of course, they traded two draft picks away uh, to get Josh Scobie and Brandon Boykin uh, from the Jaguars and Eagles respectively, but then they received one back when they traded uh, punter Brad Wing over to the Giants. So I know that's a lot to uh, digest, but just think of it this way. They lost their fifth round pick, but picked up a sixth and pick up a seventh. So they have two sixths, two sevenths, and that might be where they're looking at some of these players. Uh, like one of the ones we detailed over in the guide, and you know his name is escaping me right now. I think it's Jatavis Brown, but he he's definitely the player that was the Akron Zip, who was the MAC Defensive Player of the Year. So it might be somebody that you're looking. Uh, he wasn't invited to, you know the the regular NFL scouting combine, but yet he might be one of these guys. And, and that's not uncommon for a defensive player of the year uh, within a conference, because if you look at somebody like Michael Sam that was over from Missouri, uh, and you know he could have been for different reasons, but much in the same uh, aspect, he was a conference all, all-conference defensive player and was barely drafted. He, he went like in the, in the compensatory pick rounds of the seventh round. So one of the final picks of the draft, maybe three or four for Mr. Irrelevant, if I remember, if my memory serves me right. So when we're talking about maybe replacing a Jordan Zumwalt, we don't know what Jordan, who Jordan Zumwalt is. Respectively, the other name in 2015 was Anthony Chiquillo. And we don't know we don't know who Chick is either yet. You know he had a fu- a fumble recovery uh, in one of the games, but really maybe a, a couple tackles, uh, some special teams play, and that's about it. He really hasn't seen the field, so uh, he he was in seven games, uh, but you know like I said, just not enough reps. He was one of the, I think only two players had less repetitions or less snap counts than Shaquillo did. So when you're looking at the at the depth behind your main core guys and you and you may end up losing maybe one or two of them, 
would it really be that silly to think that the Steelers spend another pick on a linebacker? Well, I know. Are we making a reach here that the Steelers will go a fourth year taking a, a first round linebacker? And uh, we're in 2016 and in 2007, roughly about 10 seasons, this is going to be the 10th season now for Lawrence Timmons and he's a highly paid player. You know, the Steelers, they've been burnt by holding on to older players for too long. And it's not to say that Lawrence Timmons is not a a great player, uh, that he's not been a contributor, that he won't contribute or he won't continue to excel and be a good player. But you have to think of it in terms of the business. And $16 million uh, to continue paying someone that much money, they might want to go for a younger, cheaper option that m may play out longer. You, you just never know. So... I'm thinking maybe or maybe not that the Pittsburgh Steelers, and I know, guys, I know, we want a safety, we want a corner, we want both. We want to trade back into the first round, don't we? Or jump ahead of the Bengals and get the guy that we really want. I, I've said all of these crazy, wild scenarios, and this is just another one of those crazy, wild scenarios that come out, and I'm just, just open your mind and think about the business of football and what the Pittsburgh Steelers might go after, and you never know. This could be the fourth year they go after a linebacker. And, you know, it might not be that crazy. Remember those teams in the 70s, they had a lot of good defensive players. So we're just going to keep loading up on that, side of the, uh, on that side of the field. And I wouldn't necessarily be too upset if they go at a linebacker. But you know what? I just hope it's not in the first round. I'm with you. See, I'm with you. I'm not as crazy as you think I am. I really do appreciate all of my listeners. And if you guys do have a chance, uh, we're continually updating that 2016 pre-draft guide over on SteelCityUnderground.com. You could even do the little backslash and, and put in guides or tap or click on guides at the top. You'll find it very easily. Sign up for that. It's a free ebook. That link will always work as, as we continue to update that book throughout this uh, pre-draft process. So until next time, guys, you know what? Stay good, and I hope that you tune in again soon. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website, www.steelcityunderground.com.